بغداي رابا قد اموخنين ايديو اند سو اوبيسلي بتاون سويتش وادا باك اند فورث بلشان ديان وبلشان انجلس سو ان خامن دي لابور ميلو خونيا خبره المقلخ لابور ميتون لي مرميتون لي دو خون ان جاست اسك اوكي سو اخ تخمني مودي بس مودي همزم خديو worship night at uh, youth parishes at the end, youth committees at the end, the Central Valley. Tukhmini qat hadiyat iwech yu shawu at Soma, the season of the great fast, la, Soma Rabba. Does anyone not know what Soma Rabba is? Have we all heard that name? Badaitul Maida Soma Rabba. Khamindi anangaya qat لا أختي for the understanding of soma إنا really for the understanding of slota for the understanding of alms giving بداية تون alms giving مودي لالا when you help out in charity قخدا أنا دي لسني قأنا إطلام دي عن الصوما سلوتا and giving alms being charitable رابا أنا قاينا جودا هذان الصوما ربا and the prayers of the church tell us we should increase our sluta, our soma. This is a particular special period. Why? Because the church is fasting now with Christ. You'll recall from uh, the Gospel of Matthew it was read. The church during this season, Hadia, it's Soma Rabba Yamrachla Soma Gura Belkid Yubeta Shamiya Tulaba Minokun. The church is accompanying Christ in his fast. Awan Halbat he fasted for our sake because Christ did not have any sin. And in so doing, Qalan Mulipli Qat Achnanda Samikh. He gave us the example and also the commandment that we should fast as well, even as he fasted. So, in a nutshell, Bazat Moody Hamzuma Iman, Tamzuma Bazat Soma, Sluta, Charity, Ruani, and at other times of the year, Halbat Leila, this isn't strictly confined, Achika Soma Rabba. Your Bible studies at Yochon, Bazat. Uh, other virtues, how to increase our faith, how to increase our love for God and for our neighbor. And we call that in the scriptures, and in the spiritual life, that's called the fear of God. All of the virtues that I mentioned, Soma, Sluta, the reading of the Holy Scriptures regularly, Irwani, loving one another in the love of Christ, and doing all that Christ has commanded us, Kulla ila, under the singular virtue of the love, the fear of God, the fear of God. Now, Bible study dian adlele ila. Concerning the fear of God, as we learn it, your scriptures in the Old and New Testament, because betchazich ha progression it malpanuta teaching moody the fear of God. Rabba menochon hamunen gyobeta bet kishamiyatun men awa hochon yanchin hamzume yamrechaz diz dimen alaha lela chanasha imat awat chamindi la rabba spy la shapina yamrech diz dimen alaha meaning fear God. Have some fear of God. Moody Lamanite fear of God. The fear that we speak about is not a human emotion. It's not human fear. Leila Alde leveled Echnan on our own regular daily life. We have different fears, Lena. Fear is something, Yochayu. Chachmanasha, they fear the dark. Chachmanasha, they fear claustrophobic. They, fear, they have fears 
of a confined space. Chaykma Menochon, you have accelerated fears done at the exam period in school. Rabba, different types of fears, Itlan. And that's part of our weak human nature. We have fears of the unknown, Bina. We fear that. It's part of our human uh, makeup. And we are weak. But the fear of God, in a yocha category, Raba Raba Prishta. We're speaking about something much different. And the fear of God is necessary qadiyan as Christians qad yarwisikh yohei manuta. We'll go to the next line. Ayakha artworki wa itwali mani matinna qalukhum. Obviously, ilakha triangle ila. We peepad yakstu tela khus tawa with rakham alayn. Yani, have pity, O good one, and have mercy on us. Answer me, O Lord. responses liturgically during the period at Soma Rabba. They echo Anna sentiments. He is the all good one. So Ayya Mutali, I think it's fitting for a pictorial expression at Moody Lazdutit Alaha. Okay. Now, introduction. Akhtbut Khiri, one of the greatest virtues. You know what a virtue is, La? Can anyone define a virtue? Christian virtues, Mudina. What is a Christian virtue? Okay, in Bakr Nochon, what is a okay? Righteous act, okay. What is a vice? Who can define what a vice is? Bina? Sinful behavior. Okay, that's that's a good uh, expression. Before your time, there was a TV show called Miami Vice. But when we speak about the spiritual life, there are virtues and there are vices. Virtues, Ina, the good habits that we develop, spiritually, the vices are the bad, sinful habits that we develop that we have to avoid. And all this only can happen, of course, and take place with the grace of God. We need the grace of God to develop, to nurture, nurture Christian virtues, and we need the grace of God to avoid or overcome any vices we might have. Now, Yom Azmurat Amu Khadisar, Psalm 110, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord is one of the greatest of the Christian virtues. Uraba min virtues, min dubare shapire, it hai manutem shikhe tamasach matichlu chut shimet category, it the fear of God. Kamta in the ancient world, speaking about the philosophers as well, wisdom was considered the greatest virtue. This is before the dispensation of Christ. The philosophers, any of you that have taken ancient philosophy, but Chazitun, the greatest human virtue was considered to be wisdom, and especially practical wisdom. In Achrim bet Yeshkech, the fear of the Lord, Zdutit Alaha, the Shanatika Yemrechla Dechilthit Maria, Yen Dechilthit Alaha. And there is a part, Gyo Qurbana Kadisha, there where we use the word Dechilta. Can anyone recall where that is? The khilta means fear or zduta. Every Sunday, amrachna. Opadita. Kullam de khilta wiqara. Let us all in fear and in and in reverence. So 
Shemiyutun Awa Khabra, we use it often in the church because it's part, again, of our Christian life. So when we speak of the fear of God, we're speaking about Christian virtues. What the Old Testament says about the fear of God. Because when the fathers of the church, and we'll take a look at that in depth, when the sermons that are preached by the priest, we speak about the fear of God. The fear of God is what Christ taught us. But there is a progression, as we can see in the scriptures, which the church, of course, picks up. So we'll take a look at that. Old Testament, Yeshqeq, but your New Testament, Eaton Cheshift, your Parmeta, it fear of God, Modila. And we'll see what that shift is. And we'll also see what does the fear of God mean for the church and the teaching of the church, the proclamation, it's Eaton. How can we practice the fear of God in our own lives as Christians who are committed to Christ and to Christ's gospel? Because ultimately, that's what it means to have the fear of God. Okay. Introduction. Clarification. Okay. But the fear of the Lord in the New Testament, fear of the Lord and fear of God, of course, are synonymous. And by in Yesh and Yot Lashopan in the Old Testament, we have the Pentateuch. You know what the Pentateuch is? The Pentateuch. Uh, is the first five books of the Old Testament which are ascribed to Moses and they contain the law, the Old Testament covenant which was given in, in, by God on Mount Sinai. Then we have and wisdom literature, predominantly the Psalms, in the Old Testament. And then we have the prophets also speak about the fear of God. And her Yodanet la eaten her progression, Chamendochina, about what it means to fear God. Now, in Geshkech, by way of um, building a foundation, Harmin Sharet, Harmin Stawakamayit, Genesis, from the beginning in Genesis chapter 1. The fear of God is there. It may not be spelled out. In uh, the fear of God, Moody, what Allah Mulipleka Adam, Iwa to keep God's commandments. That constituted the fear of God when we look at uh, the book of Genesis, particularly in Law Chapter Skamai. God commanded Adam and Eve to keep his commandment. Out iwa katla akhliwa min tunta from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden. And by doing so, Adam, in keeping the commandment of God, would progress in the fear of God. Because he would progress in the knowledge of God. So of Adam kul madilayatiwa but anaha. Ayin raba basic ila, raba foundational ina. And we'll see that when we look in depth in the book of Genesis particularly in the accounts of creation, Yoshara to Tower Genesis. Yo Pentateuch, again going back to Genesis, Tresho Pana Eatem Bayin Chazich Mudale, Mudina Hamzuma Bazat, the fear of God. The first is Genesis 2011. And Patritun, if you have your Bibles with you. If not, I will read it. Genesis 20.11, Haquyen, and I'm sure you have in mind, when Abraham went down to Egypt with his wife, Sarah, who was also his half-sister, Abraham qad sara iwa bakhtu. And there's a, a, a story that ensues because of that. In Abraham mare leqa avi malk, in Genesis 20.11, Mara, because I thought surely, I thought because I thought surely that the fear of God is not in this place, referring to Egypt. 
and they will kill me on account of my wife. بخشاوي وأرام بقتليلة قد بختو صرة شقليلة so مرة قد آها إلى خاتي well, in fact he was telling the truth but not the whole truth she was his wife as well and his half sister so he says the fear of God is not in this place now mind you Oraham at this point already in chapter 17 and then God is revealing the covenant gradually with Oraham so by this time the fear of God is something that Abraham is very much aware of or concerned with. Obviously, Egypt, any belief system was totally different. They did not have the knowledge of the one true God who called Abraham covenant So Abraham he's cognizant of that fact. The creator of the heavens and the earth, Havitam. The second place is in Genesis 22 12, Midra having to do with Abraham. Because it's prophetic concerning the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. And this is when Abraham, Isaac, he was only and only. He was the son of the covenant. He was the heir of Abraham. And God asks him to take him up to Mount Moriah, which is would later become the Temple Mount, the Holy Land. To sacrifice him. And just as Abraham is about to slay the child, in sacrifice to God, Malachit Maria Bedwako le Idu, Umare in Genesis 22 12. And he said to him, Do not lay your hand on the boy, neither shall you harm him, for now I know that you are a man who fears God, seeing that you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. You are a man that fears God. So, Aha, this is very elementary, if you will. Geshukh. A relationship, it was a covenantal relationship. God had called him and established a covenant with him that was sealed by, the name, by God's own promise. And the reaction, it to fear God because of that. And the Levitical code, so when we look at the book of Leviticus, there's more than 630 laws according to the Levitical Code. This is in addition to the Ten Commandments. Fear your God, for I am the Lord. So the commandments that God gives in the Levitical Code, to impress upon the Hebrews, who he has called out of Egypt, that you have to fear your God, for I am the Lord. And that was the purpose of giving the commandments to them. It was relationship min alaha out He saved them from slavery in Egypt. He liberated them. He gave them salvation. Eventually into the promised land. The understanding of the fear of God according to the wisdom literature. Citations. Verses 11 to 14. We have Chabush developed understanding what the fear of God is. And the Ayya ila bitaya min bar yawaltit commandments alaha qatayipit Israel to the Israelites. And in fact, after they have already entered the promised land. This is the, the Zumara. Uh, sorry, not the Shurai. This is the Zumara before the gospel. And it echoes 
the Old Testament understanding again, itmudila, the fear of God. Marada the psalmist, Mara, come, O you children, and hearken to me. And I will teach you the fear of God. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. It, it wisdom literature, really, what it means to fear God. And he says, I think I shall not seem to be taking too much on myself if in the midst of my children I yield to my desire to teach, seeing that the master of, humil of humility himself has said, by prophecy, Albert, come, O you children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. In it, one may observe both the humility and the grace of his reverence for God. For in saying the fear of the Lord, which seems to be common to all, he has described the chief mark of reverence for God. As, however, fear itself is the beginning of wisdom and the source of blessedness. For they that fear the Lord are blessed. They that fear the Lord are blessed. He has plainly marked himself out as the teacher for instruction in wisdom and the guide to attain this blessedness. This is St. Ambrose of Milan, of Milan in the early 4th century. Psalm 86, verse 11. Show me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in truth. My heart will be glad in those who fear your name. So we have your Mazmur at Qamdi Yud Ghazilan, your Mazmur at Lai Arba, that the fear of God is the beginning of the way of righteousness. St. Ambrose Marida, that leads to blessedness. Lecha, another important point is stressed by the psalmist in that those who fear the name of God, who have reverence for God, will be attracted by others who fear the name of God. So Rabbi Gyae, Pia Shere Mirta, Qatusa Shemir, Kyonemri, opposites attract. That's not the case in the spiritual life. In fact, just the opposite is true. My heart, bimarelem zamrana, my heart will be glad in those who fear your name. Those who revere God will walk together. And that really is the test in Khadana Itla, the reverence of God and the fear of God. Itlan Khamatlach Nan Yamrich Muri Khorawatuh Mayna Tabrinuch Atmanit. Shumiutanawa Matlan. Okay, if you use it on your parents, they'll be impressed. Tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. So now in a spiritual context, are your friends people who revere God? Really, especially because you're still impressionable as youth. This is very important. Are your acquaintances and friends and the people you hang out with people who truly fear God? If they are, then you're in a good place. Make sure you keep these friends. In lena nashiti zaddi min alaha, then you're actually endangering your own, endangering your own relationship with God because they will and they can in one way or another rub off on you. So, Balkit khatusa shaklikh, brakka minda umra halbat, Balkit akhtun atlihiwi le saritu. You don't curse or swear. But do your friends do that? Now, is that consonant with, does that go along with fearing God? I think you'll all agree it doesn't. So, 
of where your level of, of the fear of God is, where your friends. King David, my heart takes delight in those who fear your name. That's another way of saying they're my friends. They're the people I want to be with. Why? Because they fear the name of the Lord. And people want to be with him. No, it's the people that fear God. Those are the people I want to have as friends. Those are the people I want to associate with. As a Khadiya, in a third example, the wisdom of Ben Sira. This is one of the particular Old Testament books. Your wisdom of Ben Sira. The chapter 1, verses 11 to 16, then 20 to 21, Bimareli. He extols the fear of the Lord. He shows the splendor of what it means to fear God. The fear of the Lord is splendor, honor, and majesty, and the crown of glory. To fear God is glorious and praiseworthy. The fear of the Lord gladdens the heart with joy and rejoicing and life forever. He who fears God shall have a good ending, and in the end of his, his days, he will be blessed. Zimon, the effects it zluted alaha carry on all throughout your life to the very end. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord, and for the believers, it was created from their mother's womb. It accompanies the man of truth, and it was fashioned from of old, and its mercy was set up with their descendants. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Albati is repeating the psalm. And its blessedness inebriates in the multitude of its fruits. All her granaries are filled with wisdom and treasures from her fruits. Okay. As what the prophets say about the fear of God, and we'll look at a very special prophet in particular, and that is the prophet Isaiah. The prophets Hadiyah speak about the fear of God in a more spiritual sense. There is a progression in the Old Testament. Isaiah 11, first, uh, verses 2 to 3, Atchamarene. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. But this is a prophecy concerning Moladet Malani Shamshicha. And the spirit of God shall rest and abide in him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And he will shine with the fear of the Lord, he will not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. The fear of the Lord, the fear of God, is one of the outpourings or the gifts of the outpourings of the Holy Spirit. It is the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is the first time your Old Testament, And these gifts about which the prophet speaks were poured out abundantly without measure upon Christ, particularly when he was baptized in Matthew 3, and also when he stands up to read in the synagogue when he quotes from Isaiah 61. Sheikh Hamad, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That includes the multitude of the gifts of the Holy Spirit poured out abundantly. Now, al qadishe u al and on us as believers, the gifts of the Spirit are poured out in measure. Then would we all agree? We can't say that we have any or all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit abundantly in their fullness. Christ had them in their fullness. And they're given to us by the grace of the Spirit in measure in accordance with what is necessary qadiyan qa salvation diyan so la khabzaya waqat the fear of god when we say that it is a gift of the spirit it means it comes from god himself lela khamdi that we make up or contrive from our own understanding 
that comes from God to us. Okay. Another text, Isaiah 66, 2, Mara and Elmiya. For all these things my hand has made, and all these things are mine, says the Lord. And whom shall I look upon and dwell in? But on the one who is meek and humble of spirit and who fears my word. Not only does God give grace to the person who fears him, but he dwells in him. The person who fears God becomes a dwelling place, a temple. Ka'alaha. And that is very important. Malpanit'ita, before the divisions of the church, of course, in the early second century. Marede, next line. Yeah. If you are not humble and peaceful, the grace of the Holy Spirit cannot live within you. Let me repeat that. If you are not humble and peaceful, and he's echoing the words of Isaiah 66 today, the grace of the Holy Spirit cannot live within you. If you do not receive the divine words with fear. For the Holy Spirit departs from the proud and the stubborn and the false soul. Therefore, you ought first to meditate upon the law of God that if perhaps your deeds are intemperate and your habits are disordered, the law of God may correct you and reform you. Adia Chazich, understanding and fear of the Lord, your New Testament, Modina. And Yeshkachtla, examples of that in the Gospels, in the Book of Acts, and in the Epistles. Your Old Testament, by way of summary, the fear of God entailed being blessed or cursed by God. Those who kept the covenant of God and the commandments of God were blessed, and they were blessed on the earth. By their possessions, for example, Abraham, let's say. We have the case of Job in the Old Testament. And those who did not abide in God's commandments were cursed, meaning God exacted judgment upon them in their lifetime. Your Old Testament division need a bit of blessedness and then being cursed. If you keep the law and its precepts, you'll be blessed. If you break them, you'll be cursed. Now, your New Testament, of course, Iman Yeshua dispensation, the Branuta, the divine economy, it mshicha, that is superseded because now there is something very important at work which is not simply the keeping or the breaking of the commandments of God, the blessedness or the being cursed. In Adiya Itlan, Adiya Itlan Cha understanding Chita, which Christ brings, and that is grace. Now it is the grace of God that is taking place among men. And what is grace? It, it's a free gift, min alaha. Ila e shapakat, e taibutat alaha. You might have heard that word many times, yo'ita. The grace of God is operative, not the, the retribution of God according to the Old Testament. And that grace, which is the free gift of salvation, min alaha, qadiyan, is brought about through Christ, who is the Son of God because he knows the mind, he is the mind and the will of God completely and fully. Yeshkech, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 10 to 13, ishtassar hal shawassar, that should be 17. Lecha, in the opening, in the prologue of the Gospel of John, he explains our shift, our spiritual shift, takhidawaya, min, the understanding of the Old Testament to the understanding that grace is now reigning through the dispensation of Christ. The evangelist says, he, meaning Mshicha, was in the world, and the world was made through him. He's speaking about the word of God now. Remember, in the beginning was the word, 
So he begins with the divinity of Christ, which is eternal. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but who were born of God. And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Marti adorus pashuku le aha. Anajalya anakaye. Two important things he says. Ha. Marada, we have taken a part from his spiritual grace, and through it we are made participant together with him in this adoptive affiliation, in this being adopted and becoming children of God now. Even though we are very far away from that dignity because of the sin which take holds in man. Mindichina Marede, he says, instead of that grace, in the place of the old law, we have a new grace. Grace for grace, or in some translations, grace upon grace. Instead of the law, now we have Moody Shopet law, the Old Testament law. Christ, or, okay, so that's part of the old law, la. So when John says grace for grace, the first grace is the old law. Now we have the gospel. The gospel. Do you see that? So in the Old Testament, we have the old covenant law the Mosaic Law, the Ten Commandments, and the, the laws in Leviticus. But in the dispensation in Christ, we have the Gospel. That is the law of the Spirit. That's the spiritual law. By Gospel, I don't mean necessarily the core of Christ's teaching. Of course, in the, the Sermon on the Mount, that is the heart of Christ's teaching. So we have the Gospel. We are now under the gospel, which is the grace that has taken place, the place of the former grace, which is the old law. Okay. When we look at the book of Acts, for example, Chazogyu Acts 9.31, St. Luke is the author of Acts, and he says, But there was peace in the church in all of Judea and Galilee and in Samaria, while being edified and walking in the fear of God. That's how the church was edified, and it spread, and it grew because it walked in the fear of God, and it multiplied in the consolation of the Holy Spirit. And the church always has to walk in the fear of God, not just the church, in the time of the apostles. That is one of the mandates of the church by Christ himself given to us. Unfortunately, there are some Christian churches that do not walk in the fear of God. And they have replaced the gospel of Christ with another gospel. They are allowing things and ways of living which are contrary to the gospel of Christ. And they sanction them. They allow them. So that's why Luke says that the church flourished and it was consoled by the Holy Spirit because it continued to walk in the fear of God. And we as a church have to continue to walk in the fear of God as well. In our teaching, in the way we fulfill the commandments of Christ, in the way that we interact, the principle has to be to interact with love even as Christ loved us. Thirdly, in the epistles, predominantly St. Paul, Rabba Hamzu made about the fear of God. Just one example, in Marpolis, Ile 2 Corinthians 7, 1. And he says, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all that should be impurity. Impurity, that's a typo. 
in some translations it says filthiness, all impurity of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God, which is another way of saying that the fear of God, when we flee from all impurity, both corporeal, fleshly, and spiritual, we will be perfected in holiness. But that comes about when we have the fear of God. Consciously, when we fear God, as Christians. Finally, I want to look at the um, sayings of the fathers of the church in different periods. Yo'ita, who are commenting on the scriptures, of course, and who are expounding and telling us what it means to live as a Christian practically. Chamene, and he's pre-Nicene, meaning he comes before the Council of Nicaea, so he's during the period of the undivided church, Ile Clement of Alexandria, from the early second, late first, early second century. Marele, fear is the beginning of love. Fear is the beginning of love. And then it all turns into love. Fear of God is not the dread of God, but dread of falling away from God and falling into sin and into passions. Fear of God is not the dread of God. I can confidently say that Christianity is the only religion, only faith, that teaches us that God is our Father. And that is only possible through Christ, who is the Son. He has made it possible for us to be adopted as children of God. Other religions will speak of God in terms of fear, and in terms of the dread, Dila Clement of Alexandria, Mana. They fear that Allah la maqilu, la maqidlu, la. But our fear of God is based in love. And we'll see that further. St. Paul concludes all of this for us in saying that. Secondly, we have Maraprem Rabba, one of our own great Malpane, in the early 4th century. Hamzu mele bazit the fear of God, and he has this to say. But if you have truly loved the Lord and apply all efforts towards improving the future kingdom and have made a vow to labor due to your sinful falls, then remember the judgment and eternal suffering, awaiting with fear your departure from this world. And the fathers of the church also say this, if we have them in mind constantly, whatever we're doing, wherever we're going, if we keep them in the front of our mind, we will flee from the impurity that we spoke about. First of all, it is death, because death is something that we all have to face at one point. And the remembrance of death, the fathers of the church and the spiritual fathers say, will help us to flee sin. Secondly is judgment. St. Paul says it has been appointed once for men to die, and after death, there is the judgment. We all have to be judged by God. The third thing is the kingdom of heaven because that is the reward that we await to have by the grace of God, to be with God eternally in his kingdom. And fourth, the punishment for those who do not flee from impurity, and that is the fires of hell. <inaudible> we will have present before us at all times the fear of God, if we remember that. Secondly, the fear of the Lord is the source of life. The fear of the Lord is the firmament of the soul. The fear of the Lord brings us to orderly spiritual thoughts. No one is so exalted as the one who fears God. The fear of God exalts us Spiritually, of course, he means. Whoever fears the Lord is like a light that shows many the path to salvation. Whoever fears the Lord is like a fortified city standing on a hill. And before his face, the evil de demons tremble. 
كل أني يقانخلو جزدوت تتقالها. One of the other fathers of the church, أو إلى إت مدنخا. Yeah, Afrahat. In the early fourth century, Bikhtawale, Afrahat, the Persian, Persian sage, he writes uh, right after the time of the Council of Nicaea, Itle Kha Kitawa Ina Isritla demonstrations. Jishanatika, they're called Takhviyati. Demonstrations meaning they're proofs, Manutam Shikheta. But he's discussing different things. Uh, for example, in this quote, Lakha. It's demonstration 10. He speaks about the pastors of the church, the shepherds of the church, they're exhortative. They teach the faithful how they should be behaving as Christians. So he says in demonstration 10, Mata, for a person who comes to the fear of God is like a person who is thirsty and comes to the water spring, drinks and is full, and the spring is not even a bit diminished. The fear of God is like a spring continuously pouring forth uh, that water of the Spirit, Gawan. Hadrik Tehi Tamare, the demonstration 23, which is on the cluster of grapes, and he speaks about the church, Tama. Mara, for us, our treasure is in the place of promise, and the place of our treasure will be our thought. There is nothing greater than the fear of God, and the man who keeps the commandments is glorified. For many people are called sages, meaning wise men, wise people, but there is none wise like the, there is no wisdom like the fear of God. It is greater than any type of human wisdom. The reading of scriptures, which helps us in our growth uh, in the fear of God. And that's a very important virtue that we should cultivate as Christians is reading the Holy Scriptures regularly. Mare, it is especially in the pure heart to fear God. A pure heart, he will fear God. Who gave the sacred verses, meaning God who gave the sacred verses to us and set before us a journey in great labor and great fear by the narrow door and the fine path, fearing God. And our Lord told us that we should walk the narrow path, because that leads to eternal life. We have the Desert Fathers. Uh, the Desert Fathers are from the early tradition of the church. Usharuinim in St. Anthony in Egypt, and those who followed in Bechar Tatilu Ka Mesopotamia Da Qabit Narin, who Shutislu De Rayuta Yumadan Khada, they write in different periods of, of the church. But I want to look at one quote particularly. Marinaqat, there are two kinds of fear. The first one, and initially, there's one that is initial, Makhleta, and there is a second one which is perfect. One fear is characteristic of those who are beginning to be pious. That means who are beginning to practice himanuta, mshicheta. While the other fear is that of perfect saints who have attained to the measure of perfect love. So we're, we are mostly in the first category. Hello. For example, he who fulfills the will of God because of the fear of tortures, yana bizdayele mindyantit alaha gyoprakta, as we said, is still a beginner. They fear God. Because they fear the tortures of judgment. This is an initial fear. This is an elementary fear of God. Let's go to the second one. Another one, Marena, fulfills the will of God out of love for God, loving him just in order to please him. So there is the one who fears God, so he fears the torments of judgment, the torments of hell, the torments of being 
eternally distant from God. Ina, the other love, the other fear brings us to love. Those who love God, fear Him and fulfill His commandments because of that love. The saints, Marele Ahamalpana, call this perfect love or true love. Basically, it is when we do something, Kachanasha, Budchater Donasha. So, Katusa, let's say, maybe in your earlier years, you would be afraid of doing something against your parents because you fear that you get a spanking. I guess they don't spank you anymore. You probably got one even to Nabusuli. So, Yamri Turma, you would think in your mind, well, I better not do this. In a, as you get older, to be able to say, I will keep my parents' word because of the great love I have for them is a perfect fear. It's a fear that's based on love. Or fear that we, by the grace of Christ, need to nurture your chayyan because Christ has given us that possibility. This perfect fear, they continue, which is born from this love, banishes and casts out the original fear, the elementary fear that we had. And this is why the apostle says, perfect fear, perfect love, Machleta, casts out fear. That's in 1 John. Nevertheless, it is not possible to attain perfect fear in any other way than by the initial fear. We have to take those baby steps. Qatmatakh, kiss, perfect love to Allah and fear. Finally, I want to take a look at Mara Saq Ninveh. I'm sure you've heard of Mara Isaac of Ninveh. He lived in the middle to late 7th century. He has many, many writings. And... His writings are constantly being discovered. Who translated uh, as a great spiritual giant. But he was a bishop of the Assyrian Church of the East. So he's written much on the spiritual life. And a lot of what, what he has written is mostly for the monks and for the solitaries that are on the difficult road of spiritual perfection. In Arab Indiana, we can also use for our daily lives your growth at Heimanut and Bimshicha. Marele, just as it is impossible to traverse a great sea without a ship and oars, so can no one attain love without fear. We can traverse, that means we can travel, the foul-smelling sea between us and mental paradise only on the boat of repentance that has the oars of fear. So he's saying repentance is the boat that will take us to perfect love of God. But if these oars of fear do not guide the ship of repentance by which we travel the sea of this world to God, we will drown in this foul-smelling sea. And the foul-smelling sea, of course, is the world of sin, Lena? Rabbi Yai Bat Ina Prachyawu. Go to the next slide. Repentance, he says, this is important. Repentance is our ship. Fear is its rudder. The rudder is in the back of the boat. Aini Madrajanada. And love is the divine harbor. That's where we want to get to. Therefore, fear leads us on the ship of repentance takes us across the foul-smelling sea of life and guides us to the divine harbor, a bandar, which is love. And when we attain love, then we have reached God and our path is complete. And we have reached the island of the other world, where is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is a beautiful image that he gives us of how we are really all travelers, the foul-smelling sea. But God is also present around us and in our midst. 
when we have the fear of God, we can realize that and we can accept that. Now, to conclude, concerning the fear of God, a quote was given earlier from the first, gospel, first letter of St. John, verse four, uh, chapter 4, verse 18. Marada, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. And then going back to the New Testament, understanding it grace, that gives us courage. La zadakh min punishment, halbad. La zadakh min punishment when we live a righteous life. And whoever fears has not been perfected in love. Now, how do we foster, and I want to end with this simple question, how do we foster, how do we nurture the fear of God, Yuchayin? And as the scriptures and the fathers of the church tell us, not only is it possible, but it is an imperative. It is a must-do qadiyan, acham shikhaye. And that's really what defines us or will define us as Christians. To be able to foster the fear of God, Yochayan, we have to desire it. To foster the fear of God in his life. When from a young age your parents, for example, brought you to church and taught you to receive holy qurbana, and when they prayed with you at home, and when they taught you about soma, and when you were little, I'm sure many of you, your parents would read Bible stories to introduce you to the scriptures. That seed of the fear of God was planted in your and that is the role of every parent, is to teach and plant the seed of the fear and love of God. But now, at this age, the rest is up to you. You have to want to reach what the fathers speak about perfect love of God. So that their fear, and by fear again we mean reverence of God, grows and matures into the perfect love of God. We're still all on that way. That's a lifelong process. But we have to consciously So you're never too young to think about how to foster the reverence of God in your life. I mentioned a few ways. One of them which is very practical and something you'll probably use on a daily basis, is choosing the right company and the right friends, the right people to hang out with. Are they people that love God? Do they fear God? Do they have a good spiritual Christian influence on you? Awa Khamadi Rabba practical because I know that for many of you who your friends are and who they are not, is an important thing. And it's very important, even as grown-ups, to choose the right people to be around. Because you're still very impressionable. We who are a bit older have gone through many trials. That boat that Saint Isaac was speaking about, especially the younger ones. So during this holy season of fasting and penance and repentance, Yoita, Aha season, it's Soma, I would like to ask that each and every one of us think seriously and meditate upon how we can have the fear of God grow in our lives. Yes, that's a part of it, but I shouldn't be telling you that, nor should the priests. That should come instinctly because of the fear of God that abides in you. 
Then I had that. And to engage in fasting as well. And each and every one of us, Masa Sayyim. Then uh, there's no excuse why we can't fast today. There's no excuse why we can't pray more. There's no excuse why we can't, from what we have at least, give something as a charity for those who are more needy than we are. This is all part and parcel of nurturing the reverence and fear of God. And particularly, that is the pinnacle because through the sacrament, we are united to Christ Himself. Ayin Bush, Ayin, that's the, the energy boost, Yochayin, for the reverence and fear of God. Ayutun Basim, are there any questions? Takhminyat, Ibu Qari, clarifications? Any from the first row, Nakhman? Well, yeah, and the judgment, there's, well, of course, there is punishment, yeah, there is punishment. You know, again, as sons, sons and daughters, I mean, but because he loves them so much, he doesn't want to be ashamed before them for having done something silly. And that's perfect love. That's what the fathers are speaking about. I, that's something, again, we have to work on and to nurture. You know, that's what we strive to attain, is that perfect love. But yes, of course, there's judgment. Remember, if the four things, the four, they're called the four final things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell, we will flee from sin. That will help us to flee from sin. You are a good group. And God willing, we can have more opportunities in the future. Thank you.